Brought to you by wikivd.com Emmylou Harris, Early Years Harris is from a Korea military family. Her father, Walter Harris, was a Marine Corps officer, and her mother, Eugenia, was a wartime military wife. Her father was reported missing in action in Korea in 1952, and spent 10 months as a prisoner of war. Born in Birmingham, Alabama, Harris spent her childhood in North Carolina and Woodbridge, Virginia, where she graduated from Garfield's High School as class valedictorian. She won a drama scholarship to the UNCG School of Music, Theatre and Dance at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, where she began to study music seriously, learning to play the songs of Pete Seeger, Bob Dylan, and Joan Baez on guitar. She dropped out of college to pursue her musical aspirations and moved to New York City, working as a waitress, to support herself while performing folk songs in Greenwich Village coffee houses. During the 1960s folk music boom, she married fellow songwriter Tom Slocum in 1969, and recorded her first album, Gliding Bird. Harris and Slocum soon divorced, and Harris and her newborn daughter Hallie moved in with her parents in Clarksville, Maryland, a suburb near Washington, D.C with Graham Parsons. Harris soon returned to performing as part of a trio with Jerry Mule and Tom Guider. In 1971, members of the country rock group The Flying Burrito Brothers saw her perform. Former Birds member Chris Hillman had taken over the band after the departure of founder Graham Parsons, was impressed by Harris, and briefly considered asking her to join The Flying Burrito Brothers. Instead, Hillman recommended her to Passons, who was looking for a female vocalist to collaborate with on his first solo album, GP. Harris toured as a member of Parsons' band, The Fallen Angels, in 1973, and the pair shone during vocal harmonies and duets. Later that year, Parsons and Harris worked on a studio album, Grievous Angel. Parsons died in his motel room near what is now Joshua Tree National Park on September 19, 1973, from an accidental overdose of drugs and alcohol. Parsons' Grievous Angel was released posthumously in 1974, and three more tracks from his sessions with Harris were included on another posthumous Parsons album, Sleepless Nights, in 1976. One more album of recorded material from the period was packaged as Live 1973, but was not released until 1982. The Hot Band Warner Brothers a and representative Mary Martin introduced Harris to Canadian producer Brian Ahern, who produced her major label debut album, Pieces of the Sky, released in 1975 on Reprise Records. The album was surprisingly eclectic, especially by Nashville standards, including cover versions of The Beatles, For No One, Merle Haggard's Tonight, The Bottle Let Me Down and The Leuven Brothers, If I Could Only Win Your Love. It also featured Blue Bird Wine, a composition by a young Texas songwriter, Rodney Crowell, who was the first in a long line of songwriters whose talent Harris has championed. The record was one of the most expensive country records produced at the time, featuring the talents of James Burton, Glenn Hardin, Ron Tutt, Ray Polman, and Bill Payne, as well as two tracks that were cut with the Angel Band. Two singles were released, Too Far Gone, which initially charted at number 73, and Harris' first big hit, If I Could Only Win Your Love, a duet with Herb Pedersen, which peaked at number 4. Executives of Warner Brothers Records told Harris they would agree to record her if she would get a hot band. Harris did so, enlisting guitarist James Burton and pianist Glenn Hardin, both of whom had played with Elvis Presley as well as Parsons. Burton was a renowned guitarist, starting in Ricky Nelson's band in the 1950s, and Harden had been a member of the Crickets. Other hot band members were drummer John Ware, pedal steel guitarist Hank DeVito, and bassist Emery Gordy, Jr. with whom Harris had worked while performing with Parsons. Singer-songwriter Crowell was enlisted as a rhythm guitarist and duet partner. Harris' first tour schedule originally dovetailed around Presley's, owing to Burton, 
and Hardin's continuing commitments to Presley's band. The hot band lived up to its name, with most of the members moving on with fresh talent replacing them as they continued on to solo careers of their own. Elite Hotel, released in December 1975, established that the buzz created by Pieces of the Sky was well-founded. Unusual for country albums, at the time, which largely revolved around a hit single, Harris albums borrowed their approach from the album-oriented rock market. In terms of quality and artistic merit, tracks like Sin City, Wheels, and Till I Gain Control Again, which weren't singles, easily stood against tracks like Together Again, Sweet Dreams, and One of These Days, which were Elite Hotel was a number one country album, and also did sufficiently well as a crossover success with the rock audience. Harris appealed to those who normally disapproved of the country market's pull toward crossover pop singles. Elite Hotel won a Grammy in 1976 for Best Country Vocal Performance, Female. Harris' reputation for guesswork continued. She contributed to albums by Linda Ronstadt, Guy Clark and Neil Young, and she was tapped by Bob Dylan to perform on his Desire album. Harris also filmed one of the studio sequences, owing to her touring schedule. In the band's The Last Waltz, singing, Evangeline, Burton left the hot band in 1976, choosing to remain with Elvis Presley's band, and was replaced by English guitarist Albert Lee. Harris' commercial apex was Luxury Liner, released in 1977, which remains one of her definitive records. On Luxury Liner, Harris' mix of songs, from Chuck Berry, Say La Vie, Graham Parsons, The Carter Family, and Kitty Wells illustrate a continuity in artistic merit to country music often overlooked at the time. Even so, many fans expected more original tunes, so she became known as a cover artist. Despite top 10 singles with Say La Vie and Making Believe, the album's best-known track is the first recorded cover of Towns Van Zandt's classic, Pancho and Lefty, which would be a number one hit for Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard in 1983. At the end of 1977, Crowell left the hot band to pursue a solo career. His replacement was bluegrass multi-instrumentalist and singer Ricky Skaggs. Quarter Moon in a Tencent Town signaled a slight change of direction from Harris' previous three albums. Rather than mixing classic and contemporary, the album is made up largely of recently written songs, though from a wide variety of writers. Two More Bottles of Wine, written by Delbert McClinton, became Harris' third number one single. To Daddy, written by Dolly Parton, went to number three, and a third single, Easy From Now On, went top 20. The album included two songs by Crowell, two by songwriter Jesse Winchester, and one by Utah Phillips. Thank you for watching, brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.